God help us. God help us if the day comes that we no longer weep over our shortcomings.
Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we glorify your name. Thank you for this time, this opportunity to, to read your word to Heavenly Father. I pray to God that you would open our hearts, open our minds to God. Open our ears so that we can hear what you have to say, dear God. I pray that all distractions be removed, dear Heavenly Father, and you would allow us just to focus on you, to focus on what you would have to say to us in your word, dear God. I pray that you would just use me to be able to speak to your people, to encourage your people, and, and uplift your people, dear Heavenly Father, so that when we leave here, we will be better and not bitter. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. 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 I want to start this morning by reading from a passage of scripture found in Luke, the 22nd chapter. <clears throat> this might be a familiar uh, verse of scripture story for you. Starting in verse 24, the Bible says, So they rest, arrested him, him being Jesus, and led him to the high priest's home. And Peter followed at a distance. The guards lit a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat around it. And Peter joined them. A servant girl noticed him in the firelight and began staring at him. Finally, she said, this man was one of, the follower, one of Jesus' followers. But Peter denied it. Woman, he said, I don't even know him. After a while, someone else looked at him and said, you must be one of them. No, man, I'm not, uh, Peter retorted. About an hour later, someone else insisted, this must be one of them because he is a Galilean too. But Peter said, man, I, do, I don't know what you're talking about. And immediately, while he was speaking, the rooster crowed. At that moment, the Lord turned and looked at Peter. Suddenly, the Lord's words flashed through Peter's mind. Before the rooster crows tomorrow morning, you will deny me. You will deny three times that you even know me. And Peter left the courtyard weeping bitterly. TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all of the other social media platforms that we have give people the ability to record and share life's happy moments, um, the precious milestones that, that, that occur, funny pet videos, which I'm surprised that I'm starting to get into those little dog videos. They're, they're so cute. Uh, I can't believe I said that in this on tape, but I'm getting into the, into the funny pet videos. Food choices, that's another one. People upload their food choices and, and that's all on those uh, platforms. Uh, the cute things people, uh, children say and do. Uh, everything can be recorded nowadays. I was thinking about that and I kind of wish that smartphones were, were invented back in the day. Um, when I was like in high school and stuff like that. <coughs> so perhaps <coughs> the camera will be rolling the one and only time I actually dunked in a basketball. <laughs> you know, I, I, I wish the cameras were going during that time. That way I would have proof that on that day, me and Michael Jordan were on the same left. That's too far. That's too far. That's, that's too far. I, I know. I know that's too far. Not, not, not all things that are uploaded to these social media uh, platforms, TikTok, Facebook, uh, YouTube, whatever. Not all things are happy moments. Some people have gone viral for all the wrong reasons. Um, the, their, their, their most embarrassing moments, the lowest points in their lives are, off, are often caught on tape and uploaded for the world to see. And that stuff stays there. Well, God didn't use YouTube. He never used TikTok. But in his providence, his word includes stories and instances of people at the worst part, the worst times in their lives. And the passage that, that we just read is a good example of one of those times. I call it, and the title of this message is, The Day Peter Messed Up. The Day Peter Messed Up. 
So before we discuss what happened and, and, and learn from, from some of the things that happened in this uh, particular passage, let's talk just a little bit about who Peter was and why he was so important. So, so Peter was a fisherman by trade. And one day, uh, he and his brother Andrew were out working when they had a divine encounter that changed their lives. Uh, that account is found in Mark, the first chapter. Let me read verses 16 through 18. It says, one day as Jesus was walking along the shore of the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon, who was Peter, and his brother Andrew throwing a net into the water, for they fished for a living. Jesus called out to them, come, follow me, and I will show you how to fish for people. And verse 18 says, and they left their nets at once and followed him. I like how, how, how verse 18 says that they left at once and, and followed him. It shows them that they were all in. They were all in. They, they decided at that point that they were going to follow Christ. Now keep that in mind. Follow me. Keep that in mind because we're going to come back to that uh, in a little bit. Perhaps the most famous story about Peter, other than the fact that he denied uh, Christ, is the time when, when Peter walked on water. Um, and, and as far as I know, Peter is the only person besides Jesus to have uh, accomplished that fate, that feat, rather. He's the only person in history who, who had the opportunity to walk on water. You know, that, that's, uh, that's kind of telling. Um, again, it reminds me of the time I dunked and me and Michael Jordan, too far again. That's, that's too far. <coughs> But he's the only one that was able to do what Jesus did in that instance. Peter became one of Jesus, uh, the, the, one of the three disciples that were in Jesus' inner circle. The Bible oftentimes on several occasions mentions the trio of disciples, uh, Peter, James, and John. They were there when, uh, when Jesus was transfigured, transformed. Uh, and the Bible says that his face shone like the sun and his clothes became as white as light. They were there in that intimate moment when Jesus uh, was transfigured um, and, and they were able to see something that nobody ever seen before. That's, that's, that's Peter. He, he, this, this is the guy we're talking about. Peter is the same. This is the same Peter that, that God revealed. God himself revealed to Peter that, that Jesus was the Messiah. Remember when, when Jesus said, who do people say that I am? And the disciples were saying, some people say that you're this, some people say you're that. And then Jesus said, well, who do you say that I am? He's talking to his disciples. Mm -hmm. And it was Peter who stood up and said that you are the Christ. Mm -hmm. That Peter. So that, that's, who we're, that's who we're talking about during uh, uh, that, that Peter. He, he's, the, he's the one that we're talking about. He's the one that... That uh, Jesus, during that same uh, sit, uh, it's situation, Jesus calls him the rock. He, he renamed, he nicknamed, he gave him a, a nickname, he called him the rock, and he said, upon this rock, this revelation, I will build my church. All of that came from Peter. So my, the, the question I have in my mind is, after all Peter experienced with Jesus, you would think that he would be one of the ones that would stick with Jesus in his darkest hour. Mm -hmm. You would think that. Especially since Peter says this in Matthew, this 26th chapter, beginning at verse 33. This is after Jesus uh, tells the entire group that they would desert him. Listen to what Peter says. He, Peter declared, even if everyone else deserts you, I will never desert you. Jesus replied, I tell you the truth, Peter, this, that this very night before the rooster crows, you will deny three times that you know me. Look at what he said. No, Peter insisted. He insisted. Even if I have to die with you, I will never deny you. And because Peter was a leader, look at what the last word says. I didn't catch this, uh, in, but when I was studying it, uh, this kind of was pointed out. All the other disciples, they vowed the same thing. Every last one of them said that they were not going to leave. Mm -hmm. They were not deserve Jesus. Every last one of them said that, look, we're, we're going to be your ride or die. We're going to be with you forever to the end. Mm -hmm. That's what they vowed. So how does a person go from being that person who emphatically declares 
that they would never deny Jesus. How does that person go to flat out denying him, deserting him, leaving him in his darkest hour? The answer, it, it really is simple. Peter, like most of us, like all of us, I should say, he had his own set of flaws. Now, even though he was a disciple of Christ, he wasn't perfect. He, 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 wasn't, he wasn't flawless. Many disciples describe Peter as being uh, impulsive and re uh, reacting without thinking. During one conversation, when Peter was, uh, when Jesus was telling the disciples about his earthly assignment that he was going to have to die and he was going to be killed and all this, Peter he he, he pulled Christ aside and said, "Look, not not so. Don't you you don't have to go that route." And Jesus says, "Get behind me, Satan." I think it's, you know I'm pointing this out because it's interesting to me that that on the one hand Jesus is praising them and saying, "This is Peter. This is the rock." But then in this instance, Jesus is saying, get behind me, Satan, because Peter wasn't aligned and didn't, he didn't, he, from, he didn't understand Jesus' assignment, his mission. <clears throat> Peter also was a hothead. That same night when Jesus was arrested, Peter was the one who cut off the ear of the high priest's slave. So, so that's a little bit about Peter. So let's go back to Luke 22. And talk about the day Peter messed up. After being called out by three people, three different times, Peter denies Jesus. And, and Luke's uh, account of this particular story in verses 61 says this, At that moment, the Lord turned and looked at Peter. Suddenly the, word, the Lord's words flashed through Peter's mind. Before the rooster crows tomorrow morning, you will deny three times that you even know me. I want you to think about this. And, and, and as best you can, put yourself back in this situation. And pretend you're Peter. And, and, and you, just, you just denied the person that you love. You just denied him. That you ever knew him. And then the rooster crows. And then imagine this. Jesus, your Lord, turns and looks at you. While you were getting the words out and you were saying, I, I, I don't even know the man. You hear the rooster in the distance. And then across the courtyard, Jesus is looking right at you. Perhaps not in a condemning way. Perhaps he was he had he still has compassion. He still he still loved, loves Peter. But Peter was caught. He was caught. Jesus is looking at him. I, 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 that 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 kind of and this is in, in Luke's in Luke's account. This is the only account where we see that Jesus turns and looked at Peter. That's, that's kind of crazy to me. That's crazy to me. When, when, when Jesus, I mean, because I can, I can imagine that. I can imagine that Peter, Peter is looking and Jesus is watching him. When many people read this particular passage of Scripture, they tend to judge Peter harshly. They, they, they judge him harshly and they, they say to themselves, you know, they asked the question, how can Peter deny Christ when he walked with him every day? When he saw the miracles that he did. When he was with him, when he fed the, the 5,000 people. When he fed the 4,000. There was a time where, when, when Peter had to pay his taxes and he was talking to Jesus about taxes. And Jesus said, look, go, go to the lake. The first fish that you catch, the first fish that you catch, open his mouth. And in the fish's mouth. The fishes. I caught that. In, 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 in the mouth of the fish, you, you'll, you'll, you'll see the, the money that you need in order to pay the taxes for both you and me. 
Peter had all of these experiences. And people who judge Peter harshly, they'd be like, how can he go through all of that and still deny Jesus? They, 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 they say this, in, and I hear this all the time. I would never do what Peter did. I would never deny him. If I was back in the Bible days, I would believe Christ and I would follow him to the day that I die. They say the same thing. But hold on. Before you look down on Peter, think about the days you messed up. Think about the days that you didn't do everything that you should have been doing. Think about the times that you failed. Think about the times that, that, that you missed the mark. See, it's, it's, it's easy because we, we, we're reading this and this story is in the Bible and, and, and will forever be recorded for all of us to look at. The Bible is God's TikTok. God's YouTube. And so we're always going to see this story. And it's easy for us to, to, to pass judgment on Peter. But you're forgetting about the day you messed up. You're forgetting about the day that you lied. The day that you, you, you cheated. The day that you stole something. The day that a few choice words came out of your mouth. Don't forget about the day you messed up. And we, we, tend, to, we tend to do that. But think back and just go back this week. I'm sure there's several things that, that I did where, where, where I, I missed the mark. I failed. Listen, you, you, you may mess up. On the day Peter messed up, he physically met Jesus' eyes because Jesus was watching him. I think we sometimes forget that when we mess up, there is a God who sees everything, who knows everything. And, and even though our mess ups are not broadcast to the world to see, God sees it. Don't, don't, don't forget that. Those secret things that we do that nobody knows about, God sees it. So even though we're reading about the day that Peter messed up, let's not forget that God watches everything that we do. And, the, and even though Peter messed up on that day, look at what verse, four, uh, verse 62 says. Verse 62 says, And Peter left the courtyard weeping bitterly. Why is that important? Why is that, why is that important? The fact that he left weeping bitterly the fact that his failure that day bothered him so much. That, that it, it, it greatly disturbed him. Because the Bible says that he went away and he wept bitterly. I believe that that started the process of repentance in Peter that day. Because see, see, Peter, Peter he, he, he did what he did. And this was the day that he messed up. But when his Lord basically, uh, you know, let him know that, look, I, I know what you did, son. I know what you did. Peter was immediately remorseful. And he went out and he cried bitterly. There are some things that we do that we've yet to cry about. Mm -hmm. Yet to cry about. And if, and, if, and if weeping bitterly and, and, and being broken before God, if that's the first step to repentance, and we've yet to cry, to start to, to cry about it, that's, this, is, this is probably the best part of the story. Sure, Peter messed up, but Peter felt bad about it. He cried over it. 
some of us have yet to, to, to cry. God help us. God help us if the day comes that we no longer weep over our shortcomings. And, and, and that's exactly what sin can do. Sin can cause us to become comfortable in it. It can cause us to, to accept it. To explain it away. Everybody's doing it. It's no big deal. I'm not hurting anybody. And, and, and so we, we, we do the deed. And then we just kind of shake it off. Yeah. I'll do better next time. You know, you got, you're not working on it. You, we've got to cry about it. God help us. Because there'll be days that we mess up. There'll be days that we don't get it right. But Peter wept bitterly. We can't get to the point where it doesn't bother us that what we do is offensive to God. We can't get to that point. So Peter messed up badly that day. His failure reminds me that, that God can and does use imperfect people to accomplish His will when they repent and trust in Him. The day, the, the day Peter messed up was not the end of Peter's story. See, that's, that's, that's how come I'm excited about the fact that he, he, he wept bitterly. He, he, he had that remorse in his heart. Because that, that didn't, that, that didn't, that it, it didn't mark the end of Peter's story. Just before Jesus ascended to heaven, he had a conversation with Peter. Conversation went a little like this. It's recorded in John, the 21st chapter. Most people uh, view this particular conversation as Jesus' way of restoring, restoring Peter. Three times, Jesus asked, Peter, do you love me? Three times, Peter says, Lord, you know I love you. You know I love you. You know I love you. In fact, on that third time, he, Peter was, the Bible says that Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him a third time, Do you love me? And so he, gives, yeah, he says yes three times. Three times Jesus says to feed his sheep. And let's pick up, let's pick up in verse 18. Verse 18 says this, I tell you the truth. This is Jesus talking. He says, I tell you the truth. When you were young, you were able to do as you liked. You dressed as you liked and went wherever you wanted to go. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and others will dress you and take you where you don't want to go. Look at verse 19. Verse 19 says, Jesus said this to let him know by what kind of death he would glorify God. And then here it is. Then Jesus told him, follow me. So when you look at it, you look at Peter's life, the first thing that Jesus says when he meets Peter is what? Follow me. The last thing that Jesus tells Peter before he ascended to heaven is what? Follow me. And even though Peter failed on many occasions throughout his life, he still has the, the instructions to follow Christ. Listen, sometimes you falter. Sometimes you may mess up. But that's not the end of your story. Don't let it be. Don't let it be the end of your story. You, you still, especially if you, if you belong to Jesus, if you're a Christian, if you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, guess what you can do? You can, you can ask 
for forgiveness. And the Bible says that God is, is, is faithful and he's just and will forgive you from your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Just because we fail doesn't mean that it's final. That's not the last word. Jesus still expected Peter to accomplish great things. And he did. Even though we read about the worst day of his life, there's still hope. Jesus here is giving Peter hope. He stands, follow me. Listen, if, 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 if you follow God, even though you fail sometimes, that's better than failing to follow God at all. That's better than failing to follow God at all. We have too many people that don't, they don't even start the journey. Or if they start the journey, they fail, they fall, they stay there. You don't have to stay there. Jesus will, 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 will forgive you, pick you up, and tell you, continue to follow me. So we, we, got, we, got to, we got to get connected. We have to stay connected. And then if we fail, we just got to reconnect. That's what Jesus does for us. That's what Peter's story shows us. You don't have to stay there. You don't have to stay there. So our job, our challenge today, is to continue to follow Him. Even if you fail. Even if you fail. Amen?